This is part two of getting started, making a test stitch. So the first thing you wanna do is, you know, watch part one, which makes sure that you have the machi machine set up correctly. You have the right needle thread, etc. cetera. And um, what I would do when you make a test stitch, never start a project without a test stitch. You're just gonna have uh, problems probably. I always start with neutral settings. So that means, um, really kind of four on the pressure. You see how it tells you what is kind of the baseline. Um, here on the tension, there's a little, um, kind of in the three, four, five range is where it has like a little dial that shows you that's kind of like the default setting. And then I would choose a stitch length of around two and a half to maybe three inches. Somewhere around there is gonna be just fine. And then just use the regular straight stitch and even tells you what's the normal stitch length, 2.5. So let's go ahead and use that. All right. Now, what we're gonna do is use a stable fabric. Um, remember I told you that wovens um, have a little bit of a stretch going one direction and they're very stable in the other direction. Uh, it, it would be better probably to sew it in the really stable direction. So let's just go ahead and do that. If you, It doesn't really matter in some ways with a woven, but I would always start with a woven. This happens to be a bottom weight, which means it's thicker. Um, if it were a thinner, like a quilting cotton, I would probably just fold it over and double it because most time you're gonna be sewing through two thicknesses. Since this is thick enough, I'm just gonna sew on this one. Okay, so what you're gonna do always is you're gonna notice, um, I'm gonna move this slightly, is that the bobbin thread should have a thread running across the top like that. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little thread that goes all the way across here and it feeds through to the back. If it's not in there properly, it's not gonna, it doesn't have proper tension. Um, I'm gonna just actually take that out because that's important. You can see that the thread's right running across the top there and it's feeding through the tension disc. There's a small tension disc. If you don't feel tension, if you're pulling on this little bobbin thread, which in this case I made it different colors, and you don't feel a little tiny bit of tension, it's just like wobbling freely, that means that you need to re-thread and there's a separate video for that. Okay, so the first thing we do is you're going to um, let the machine do all of the feeding for you. Do not push, pull, yank, anything. Never on a sewing machine. You're always letting the sewing machine adjust tension and for the most part, you're just guiding it and just keeping things out of the way. So my sewing machine is on now. I've lowered my presser foot. Now it's down. And you can avoid most problems by making sure, first of all, that your two threads are hanging out the back left and you start your stitch with your hand wheel. See my hands over here? The hand wheel moving it towards you and putting the needle down. If you start in the down position, most of the time you're gonna avoid rat's nest. But just to be extra careful, you can hold the two threads. Um, some people just hold the thread tails like that. Um, you can just kind of hold it, just basically so they don't come back and get rat's nested underneath the bobbin case. Um, the other thing you can do is just make sure you make sure these are long enough. And so you can hold them whichever way you want with the needle down and then start your first stitch with with the um, and you just kind of you just kind of guide. I'm not pushing. I'm not pulling. You just let it do its own thing. And you do. And so far, that just sounds good. Now, when you end, I've got muscle memory to end with the needle down because sometimes you know you're in a project, you're needing to pivot and you know do kind of a square like that. And um, and then if you have the needle down, it just it makes you so you don't lose your place. Um, but if for some reason you end up with the needle up then what you wanna do is always use your hand wheel and on your last stitch, move till you see the needle position at its highest position. That's where this metal comes up to the top. And that's really important because it means you're not gonna lose your thread out the back. Now I'm gonna lift, pull this out sufficiently. And then I always keep my snips down here. Snip it here close to the project. Smooth out your thread tails, and then let's go ahead and inspect. Now here was my um, test stitch. You'll see that the top thread in green looks really, really good. Nice even stitches. I don't see any pink popping through. And then the, bob the bobbin thread, which is the pink, same thing. Nice even stitches with no green popping through. When you have the two separate colors that are fairly distinctive looking, it means that your tension is perfect. Now I'm gonna show you some 
some threads that are not so good, test stitches. Okay, here was a test stitch. You see this yellow one? It kind of went kind of slightly off for some reason. It's kind of like a little bit wobbly and loose, the, the yellow threads. And when you flip it over, you can see, look, I see yellow threads popping out the back and the, the blue thread, which is the bobbin thread, is um, you know kind of tight. So that tension is off. So that would require some adjusting. And there's a separate video on how to adjust tension. Tension is basically this one right here, but it could be a function of, of other things too. So anyway, my test stitch looks good on this stable woven fabric. So then next I would go ahead and uh, do a test on the real fabric. And again, you're gonna already have known that you have all the right needles and everything for your real fabric. Um, all right, that's it. Now we're gonna go to our troubleshooting video.